If I told you that your current business right now is just as important as the local church you're attending, would you treat your business differently? Hey, what's going on, my friend? It's Chris Harrell, the Kingdom Marketing Superman, and I'm excited to be before you today with another episode here in the Kingdom Marketing Secrets Podcast. And today, I actually want to talk about something that because I was inspired to share this from a recent uh, one of my interactions with one of my clients recently. And I was doing a session with one of my clients, and I was just trying to talk to her about some of the challenges that she was having, right? And she kept saying that uh, she hasn't had enough time you know, to take some actions to things that we share inside my program, my, my Rapid Success System program. And, and I was just trying to do some, you know, some deep dive questions, you know, as, as any good coach would, right? And it came down to with some of my questions that I was asking her, I discovered that I asked her this. I said, be honest with me. Her name's Tanya. I said, Tanya, be honest with me. How many days a week are you currently spending at your church, your local four walls, your, your local body? But the reason why I asked her this is because she said she, 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 she did not have time to do certain things that, that, you know, that needs to be done to get the results she wants in her business and the program. And she kept saying, I don't have time. Because, you know, she still, she still works a full-time job and she has a part-time coaching business. And she kept saying, I don't have time. So, of course, you know, is any good coach, I want to ask deep dive questions before I come out and say, oh, you got time? No, I want to find out where her, her, her schedule is and everything like that. Because I know wonderful, wonderful, wonderful lady, awesome, loves the Lord, all the good stuff. But I asked her this question and she told me where literally she spent about four days a week at church. I said, but approximately how many hours would that be? You know, it came out about eight or nine hours, you know, per week. And so, so I asked her this. I said, do you believe that God has called you to your business? Do you believe that this is something God wants you to do and, and want to create more impact to other lives? Do you believe that? And she said, yes. I said, okay. I said, do you believe that if you were to go out into plant a garden and, and you want, you know, you, you want that product to flourish, do you believe if you were to go out and do that? Do you believe that 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 garden will grow if it's not being tilled, if it's not being properly watered, if we're not making sure that the, the, the appropriate uh, nutrients and the uh, the appropriate uh, sunlight. If it's not being well managed and taken care of, do you believe that somehow it will grow and prosper on its own without this attention? In other words, could, do you think you can grow great crops if it's being neglected? She said, "No." I said, "Let me ask you this: You're married?" She said, "Yes." I said, uh, "You know how long you guys been married?" She kind of shared that with me. And I said, "Do you believe you could have a wonderful, awesome marriage with your husband if you didn't spend time with him?" If you didn't, you know, do the things necessary to create that great relationship. She's like, no. I said, so, I said, so let me ask you this. Do you believe that by you serving at the local church, do you believe that that takes priority over your business? And she said, yeah. I said, why do you believe that? She said, well, because I've always believed that. So, She's been taught and she said that I feel that if I'm not serving at church, that I would feel guilty. And that's when I knew that this was a stronghold. See, religion has a stronghold on many well-meaning believers in Christ. And, 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 and see, if God has called you to the marketplace, I'm going to share a nugget with you. Now, your pastor may not like this. He may tell you, don't watch this video. Don't be watching Chris Harrell, that, that, that kingdom guy. Don't watch that kingdom guy, right? No, the kingdom marketing guy, right? But no, seriously, check this out. Because, see, I revealed to her something. I said, have you ever heard of the seven mountains of influence? She said, no, I'm not familiar with that. I said, Go on my YouTube channel. I got a training I did teaching the seven mountains of influence. I want you to watch it. Then I want you to follow back up with me. And she went and watched it. Well, I taught the seven mountains of influence from a, from a biblical standpoint and shared with her that, listen, your business is just as important as the four walls. That pastor of that church 
and, and, and you and your business are equal in the eyes of God. I said, we got to understand this. Your business is going to attract people, affect people, impact people that, that your pastor in those four walls will never, will never reach. And unfortunately, for, for many other reasons today, because the, lo the local church today is just segregated. They have no impact on the world. I said, so you are going to be reach more people lost in the world and, uh, and other folks as well. Because why? The business world is ruled by the economy, right? And so you can create massive impact from a kingdom perspective and reach lives that, that the four walls would never reach because the four walls very rarely gets outside the four walls. And so when I began to share this with her, she was like, I've never heard this before. I said, yeah. I said, a lot of times we got to get brainwashed from the brainwashing we've already received from religion and the secular world and media, right? And so I need, if you are a believer right now, and maybe you've done the same thing that Tanya did, where you put higher stock, higher precedence, higher priority. And I asked her this, I said, let me ask you this. If you just, for, I said, what if for the next six months, you went in to step down from those ministries and you put in that nine, 10 hours a week that you, that you do give it to the local body because you feel obligated to do so because you've been told that that's what you need to do in order to please God. You've been told to do this so God will bless you, which is not biblical at all. But you've been told these things. I said, what if just for six months, so you ain't got to leave permanently, but what if for six months you say, you know, I'm going to step down from this because I'm going to focus on my ministry because your business is your ministry. Ministry is not a religious term. Ministry simply means service. That's why if, if you go to these uh, Caribbean countries, like when we go to the Bahamas or go to Jamaica, if you go to their government offices, you see that they say this is the Ministry of Transportation, the Ministry of Defense. Ministry just means service. It's not some religious term as we made it out to be. God is not religious as we made him out to be, right? God is an entrepreneur. God, 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 God owns government. The kingdom is a government, right? And so... I said, see, I want you to understand that. I said, there's some strongholds that you've been believing for your whole life. And I said, it's not going to take one good 10 minute, 15, 20 minute training that's going to break those strongholds. I said, but that's what's going to start. I said, but you have to see your business is just as important as that local church that you serve, that you attend every Sunday. I said, the moment you do that, now you can go out and create the impact God's created you to create. And I said, and guess what? You go out and create massive impact. Now you can have more revenue that you can give to your local body and outside of it. But you're going to have to see what you're doing is just as important to God's overall plan on this planet because it is. It's just as important to God's overall plan on this planet. So I just wanted to uh, share that with you. So you don't understand how powerful uh, what you have right now, especially if you're a believer in business. All right. You, you have to be able to reframe and realize that. You can create massive impact with the solutions you can help people get. But you have to be willing to spend that time for that to happen. It's just like, you know, Psalms 1. Psalms 1 give us a promise that if we meditate in God's word day and night, we will prosper in everything that we do. Right? But meditation requires time. It doesn't mean just sitting there and just reading the word 24-7. It means just keeping it on your mind to chew it like cud. I'll talk about this in another video. That's, that's a very powerful principles in Psalms 1. Game changing. But you have to, the moment I began to see my business as equivalent to a pastor's church in the local city, everything began to shift and change for me. Everything, because I realized that, man, I can reach people that they could never reach. And I'm a minister, guys. I'm a minister. I preached at many churches. But I realized that religion can be a stronghold. And, 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 and it's a stronghold on many well-meaning believers who feel guilty 
Now, if you're at a church and your pastor makes you feel guilty because you, you're not, quote unquote, serving in his four walls, yet you're serving in the marketplace, then you need to pray for that man and you realize that this. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1. Okay? So you don't let anybody make you feel guilty for doing the very thing that God is giving you and equipping you to create impact with. We all have different callings. The Bible talks about many, you know, we have different callings and different gifts. So you have to, sometimes, you got to step away. Because I was doing it, because let me share something with you. About ooh, five, six years ago, my religious mind told me that I need to serve in many ministries at church. Because we, around 20, what was it, I don't know, 2016, 2017, about seven, eight years ago, we, we had joined a new church. And I, and I was building my business. And my mind was that I need to get involved in every, every single possible ministry here. That way God will bless me. Because I used to believe that too. That if I'm involved, if I'm here all the time, if I'm serving in four or five ministries, God will bless my business. And you know what? My business failed. It began to flounder. And I began to question God like, hold up. I'm at this, I'm at this building five days a week. Right? I'm here. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. And I'm struggling. And then, 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 then it was revealed to me that I was operating out of religion. I was operating out of, let me give to get. I was operating out of works mindset, thinking that if I do this, then God's going to do that. And I had to have a huge paradigm shift. And I realized that what you have, the lives you can impact, is just as important. Just as equal in the eyes of God. And everything began to shift and change for me. So if this has been valuable for you, if you've been stuck, because a lot, a lot, a lot of us well-meaning believers in Christ have been stuck. See, we think, and here's the deal. We think it's just the secular world. We think it's just the media. We think it's just society has brainwashed us, and they have. But you also has brainwashed us, the church. The religious world has brainwashed many of the people where they put that on a pedestal and put their business below that. And unfortunately, that's not so. That's not so. So if, uh, I'll put that, that link in the description. If you want to go check out that training called The Seven Miles of Influence, because maybe this might be foreign to you too, like it was foreign to Tanya. And now she's had a breakthrough. She's had a paradigm shift. Uh, just a couple of days ago, she hit me up and said, Chris, I'm ready to launch this thing now. She's excited. But she, had to get, she, but she had to get a mental makeover. See, we have to renew our minds daily. Romans 12, 2 tells us, do not be conformed to this world. The cultures of this world, the patterns of this world. All right? And it also includes the world of religion, not just the secular world. Because religion has a powerful stronghold over people as well, where it make you feel guilty. And the kingdom is outside of the four walls. The kingdom is a government. The kingdom is not bound by some local building, by what you do in a local building. It's way bigger than that. And those of us in entrepreneurship need to get to that place mentally. We have to repent. The Bible says to repent. Repent means to change the way you think, to do a total 180. Get a new way of thinking, right? And realize that, man, what I have, this is life changing. What I have, this is groundbreaking. What I have, this is what's going to, you know, usher in the impact that I'm supposed to do while I'm on this earth. Because everyone is not called a pastor at church. All right. So I hope that helps. We'll put that link in the description to go check out that training. OK, it should be in the description. Say the seven miles of influence. Feel free to go watch it and, uh, and marinate on it. Meditate on it. And ask God, God. From one, ask God, is this is this true? This your word, and I'm gonna show, you're gonna see what it is, and it is. And Lord, how do you want me to respond to this? Because it might be uncomfortable for 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 many many of you to break free from that mindset of like Tanya had that. If I'm not serving in this local four walls, I feel guilty. I feel like I'm not doing God's will. 
right? And so it might take a while to break that stronghold. But I'm telling you right now, once the Holy Spirit gives you that breakthrough, once you get a new paradigm shift, now you can begin to walk in that fullness of God calls you to do in the marketplace. So hopefully you found that valuable. You check me out on YouTube. You know, do, do all the good YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe. Leave a, com leave a comment below what you find most valuable as well, my friend. And to the next time, my friend, see you on the next, next episode. Remember to put God first in all that you do, and you too shall succeed. Peace and God bless. Thank you.